This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. The Rails documentation is really great. It really is some of the best documentation that I've seen out there. And there's just so much to know about all the ins and outs of Rails. So in this episode, we're going to have a look at Active Record and just some of the tips and tricks that you may or may not know about. And so to get started, I'm going to generate a model. And we'll call this the product. We'll have a name, a category. We'll also have a SKU. And then we'll have whether or not this product is in stock. We'll make this a Boolean. And before we run the migrations, I'm first going to come into here. And for the Boolean, for the in stock, we're just going to set a default value and set this equal to true. And for the SKU, we also want to add an index on this. And typically, if you just do an index is set it to true, then this will create an index for this attribute. However, we also want this to be unique. So we can pass in a unique and set this equal to true. And when we go to run the Rails DB migrate, we'll get our table. And if we look at the schema, we have our Boolean for the in stock with the default true. And for the SKU, we have an index that's created and it's also set to unique. Within the product model, we have a helper called adder read only. And if we pass in the SKU, then this means whenever we create a new record, we can set the SKU. However, at that point, that attribute is now read only. So we can pull up a terminal, we can create a product, we can specify a category, and then we can give it a SKU. And so we can create this record. Then if I just set a local variable, product is equal to the product dot first, we get our product. And then if we try to change the product dot SKU, we can try to set this to some other kind of value. And then if we look at our product, it looks like the SKU has changed. If we call the product dot save, you'll see that we only updated the updated at attribute. We call the product.reload, which will requery the database. You'll see that we have our product still getting pulled up. However, the SKU has reverted back to the original value when it was created. Back in the earlier days of Rails, if we wanted to insert in multiple records, we could always do that in line, or there was a gem called the active record import. However, now this is built into Rails. So I've set a local variable called products and it is an array of hashes. We can call our product and then insert underscore all and then pass in the products variable. And without any gems, we've now did a bulk insert of our products with these four records. And so while we're on the same topic, I also have another set of variables. We have laptops and also desktops. I've deleted all the products in the database. And so now I want to create these laptops However, you'll see that there's no category given for the laptop's array of hashes. So we can call our product dot create underscore with, and then we could specify that the category is our laptops. And then we can do an insert underscore all with the laptops variable. And this again, will do the bulk insert into our products table. But now it's also inserting in the category, even though that wasn't something that we were originally provided with the array of hashes. It was something that came in as we chained in the create with method, passing in the category of laptop. So let's have a look at our products. And we want to get all of the categories where it is set to desktop. And so now we got two returns. We have the Mac mini, which is not in stock. And then we had the Mac studio, which is in stock. And so let's say my database is getting updated from an external API. And sometimes this API is going to return a list of products that I may already have in the database, but I just need to update those records. But then other times, 
or in other places of an API response, it might have new records that I don't yet have in the database. And so trying to filter out all of these can be rather difficult, and it's also prone for error. But luckily, we do have an option called Upsert, where we can take our product, and we can do an Upsert underscore all. We can then pass in our desktops variable, which contains our array of hashes. And let's say we only want to update a few attributes. So we could do an update only, and then maybe we want to specify in stock. And then we could also provide some kind of unique by, and then for the unique by, we could specify our SKU, and this would act like the primary index or the primary key that we're going to then compare the records on. So for the desktops, if we did not have one of these SKUs in our database, then we would insert in a new record. However, if we did already have that SKU in the database, then instead of inserting the record, it's going to update it. And the reason why this will work for the SKU is because we do have on the database a unique index for the SKU. If we try to insert or update the records based on the name attribute instead of the SKU, that would not work simply because we do not have a unique index for the name attribute on this products table. So we can run this, and then you'll see we got a product bulk upsert. We're inserting into the products, and it's inserting all the records. However, there is a on conflict clause where if the SKU already exists, then we're going to do an update instead. If we query the products again and just get the desktops, you'll now see that both of the products are set to true. We didn't insert in any new records. They only got updated because the SKUs matched. And so let's take our product. We're going to set this equal to the product.first. We can look at this product, and we know that it is currently in stock. But let's say if we did not know this, let's say if we just have our controller, and someone clicks a button, it comes to the controller, and we just want to flip a flag. Because the in stock attribute is a Boolean, typically you might do it something like this, where the product.in underscore stock is equal to the product.in underscore stock. And if this is set to true, then you would set it to false, otherwise you would set it to true. And that can work. You can then call the product.save, and then it'll update the database, and now the in stock is set to false. However, there is a much easier way to do this. We can just call our product, and then we can call toggle, and then pass in the symbol in underscore stock. Once we do that, we see it's set to true, but it didn't update the database. We still have to call the product.save, to persist this. If we did want to have it persist automatically, then we can add a bang on this toggle, and then it'll set it to the opposite value. So before it was set to true, and now we just set it to false. And we can run this multiple times, and you'll see that it's just flipping the in stock value from one to zero to one. Next, let's go ahead and generate another model. We'll call this the vehicle, and it'll have a name, and then we'll also have a type. And this type is a special attribute because this means that we'll do some kind of single table inheritance. And essentially what the single table inheritance means is that we have this parent class that we're going to call vehicle. We then create another file and let's just call it the car.rb. We'll have a class car, but instead of inheriting from the active record, we're going to inherit from the vehicle. We could save this file again as something else. Let's say a motorcycle and then we need to update the class. And so by doing this, we now have something persisted to our database called vehicle, but then we have two other models. We have our car and our motorcycle, and these are inheriting from the vehicle. And so let's create a car. So we'll have a car.create, we'll give it a name, and we'll just call this a civic. So this inserts into the vehicles table, and if we look at the record, we have our name civic, and the type is car. And so typically, I would try to avoid single table inheritance because it can be rather complicated sometimes. But if you do have a situation where you have multiple models that are very similar in nature, maybe they share some foundational ideas, but each one of these models are just a little bit different in their own regards, then it may make sense to use the single table inheritance. Because for a car, we can set a wheels to four, 
But for the motorcycle, we can set the wheels to two. So if we call our car wheels, we get four. And if we call the motorcycle wheels, we get two. So let's create a motorcycle and we'll give it a name Hayabusa. And so the last trick here that you can do with single table inheritance is that maybe not in this particular case, but in some cases you may have a situation where the model then becomes some other model that's part of the single table inheritance. So we'll set our vehicle is equal to the vehicle dot last. And by calling the vehicle dot last, it is a class of motorcycle. We can verify that with the vehicle dot class. We see that it's a motorcycle. And then we can call the vehicle and we can say that it's going to becomes and then a car. So we see that the vehicle, which used to be a motorcycle, it's now a car class, but the type still stayed the same. If we were to set the vehicle to the vehicle dot last again, the vehicle is still a motorcycle and the class is back to a motorcycle. However, if we add a bang to this, that the vehicle becomes a car, we got now a car class and it changed the type to car as well. You do still have to save this in order for it to persist in the database. And again, this is a rather strange use case, but this might be handy in certain situations where you do have single table inheritance and it is possible for them to become the other kind of object. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.